Hi folks. So today we're going to be looking at a famous Duke Ellington tune. Actually, it was originally recorded on solo piano, but my personal favorite version of this comes from the album called Money Jungle. It was recorded later in Duke's life where he was uh, collaborating on these tunes from his past. This one had Charles Mingus on bass and Max Roach on drums. It's really more like an uh, uh, African sounding drum pattern. It's not a jazz swing or really even like a Latin bossa pattern. So I highly recommend that before you dive into learning this tune the way I'm going to show you for guitar, that you listen to this tune in its original form. Because I'm trying to capture whatever I can from that original. Um, obviously we're not going to be able to play all the notes that Duke Ellington plays and it's not going to sound like his part as much as it could on a piano. So this is a guitar version or guitar arrangement as we say of this to an African flower. Some people know it as florette africaine which is the same thing in French. So let's start it out. Um, now if you have the real book, 5th edition or 6th edition, this will be in there. Um, you can refer to that because that's the same thing I'm referring to. I just simply added and adapted and changed things for the guitar. So the beginning part, first thing you'll notice if you compare what I'm showing you to the score, is that we're actually playing more than one note at the same time. There's two parts, right? You see the first part says first X or first time, and then the second line is the second time. So those are different, and you'll listen when you hear the song, you'll, you'll hear the difference. So we're actually playing it at concert pitch right now according to the score. We're not uh, playing it down an octave lower like guitar usually does. So we start out with our third finger on the eighth fret of the third string. That's our E flat note. This is going to be our bass note. This is the note that's not actually in the chart or in the score. The next part, which is played at the same time, is an A flat. You're going to use your pinky on the ninth fret of the second string. And then this alternates from pinky on that uh, ninth fret second string to first finger on sixth fret of first string. So it goes A to B flat. A, sorry, A flat to B flat. Notice how we're using fingers here. We're trying to get a real delicate sound. Unfortunately, I don't have time to really describe to you how the finger picking works, but you just watch. I figure if you're at this level where you're learning this, you probably already know how to do that. If not, there's plenty of good tutorials. So this is the first measure. One, two, three, four. So there's actually two measures there. Those are the E flat minor seven. Three, four. One, two, three, four. Those are the next two measures, which would be measures three and four. We're going to continue to leave this E flat note as our bass note, but we're actually going to switch fingers. We're going to use our pinky on the eighth fret of the third string E flat, and then following the score, we're going to play a G flat using our third finger on the seventh fret of the second string, and our first finger on the fourth fret of the first string. Now, you'll notice that all of these are designed to have a sustained quality to them. All these little parts are playing that look like they're really overly difficult for no reason. The reason is that we want to get a ringing quality. We want all the notes to hang over each other. See how much cooler that sounds than much more full it is? So what I'm showing you here would be an arrangement that you could use if you had a trio with like an acoustic bass player upright bass player and then a drummer. You could be playing the kind of piano part, if you will. So that's what we're doing. And again, using our fingers, letting all those notes ring. One, two, three, four. Okay, now we're going to move on to measure six, which is the A flat minor seven chord. Now this one um, is an F flat and a G flat. So it actually looks like an E natural, which it is. So using our fourth finger on the second string, fifth fret, and then we're using our first finger 
on the first string second fret while we're playing the, the minor third of that A flat chord, which is actually a C flat. So that note is going to be played with our a third finger on the fourth fret of the third string. So it sounds like this. And then what we do is we're actually going to creep our first finger over to the second fret of the third string to give us the B double flat note, which is actually equivalent to an A note and harmonic to an A note, which constitutes our G flat minor 7, which is what's written in the, in the chart. So this is what it sounds like. All that stuff, you can let that ring. Okay, so. And then, this we're going for a little bit of a different sound here. So this one, we're gonna use the uh, third finger on the eighth fret of the fourth string. This is a B flat. And then we're going to play the 4th finger, 8th fret on the 3rd string, E flat. And then while we're barring with our 1st finger on the last 2 strings, you don't really need to bar it because we're, we're not really playing that B flat on the 1st string, but it feels more comfortable just to use this shape, at least for me. So that's what I'm going to do. Um, and we're playing... The notes in the score are E flat, F, E flat, F, E flat, but we're keeping this B flat bass note underneath. Now we're going to keep this third finger down. It's a common finger for this next measure, which is a B flat minor. It's written as a B flat minor, but pretty much every time he plays it, it feels more and sounds more like a B flat minor 7 flat 5 or B flat half diminished because he's using that flat 5 note in there. He's using that um, F flat, if you will, okay? And harmonic to E, of course. So what we just did is we went from this, three, four, one, two, three, four. All we do is move up the pinky to the E note, or F flat note on the ninth fret third string, and then get rid of the first finger and put down the second finger on the G flat seventh fret second string. have some actual single notes there just like in the score so okay one two so this is going to be the F flat note again G flat note with our second finger then we're going up to a D flat and then a C flat so we play that again from the B flat minor seven flat five Okay, then the last two measures of part A are going to be with an E flat as our bass again. And that one holds down on again the eighth fret of the third string while we play the G flat with our second finger on the seventh fret of the second string. And then we bring up our pinky to get two A flats. And then we play a B flat with our first finger, sixth fret, first string, and then back to an E flat. So this is what this sounds like. One more time, three, four. Four, one, two, three, four. Okay, so that's the first part of that. So that's the A section, first repeat. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna upload this video I'm going to make another video for uh, part two and for the second repeat of part A and then for part B because that's a lot right there. Um, I would get that down first as well as you can and then we're going to look at the second repeat of part A. So this will be video one, then you're going to have video two and video three. So. Have fun, and we'll see you on the next video.